Oh. Richard, what's Richard doing? <laughs> Mark was born in Isleworth on the 7th of March 1981 to Pam and Brian. Premature, who would have guessed it? I know, it's not like we haven't heard that a thousand times before. <laughs> Only weighing £3.50 ounces. <laughs> Only weighing £3.15 ounces. No more than Mr. Pebbles, the world's smallest cat. <laughs> I've done my research, and it seems that nothing of significance happened in history on that day. However, the staff at West Middlesex Hospital still referred to it as Sparrow Bladder Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I've known Mark for around 25 years, which dating us to a time in our lives, maybe when we started at first and fourth Hamlet Scout Group. We've moved through the movement right into Venture Scouts. Right into Venture Scouts. Along the way, making some lifelong friends, many of who are here with us today. And have been a close part of our adult lives since. And some, here's the anagram, <laughs> that just won't go away. <laughs> Incidentally, for those of you who take your car to a family run business that's been delivering high quality car servicing and repair at Twickenham, to Twickenham's motorists, for over 60 years, that's dedicated to custom service and driven by quality, please be aware of their latest hire. Oh, and by the way, originally Braincell didn't have an invite for the whole day, so he, he, asked, he asked me to give you um, your wedding present early, Mark, if you could just uh, open that, please, and hold it up. Where's Braincell, <laughs> he's over there, he's over there. Where is he's over there on the right. That's a good point, that's a good point. I was never good at spelling like that. <laughs> so, so, so the, relevant, the relevance of the petrol can. Uh, Mark, Mark brings up the, uh, the tow truck company in a panic thinking the engine's gone wrong and the management system's wrong. It gets low loaded back to our friend John's garage and um, yeah, it hasn't got any petrol in it. <laughs> but thanks for yourself, thanks for, uh, thanks for the gift. Okay. Brian, sir. Brian, sir. Mark matured into a handsome young man, but not content with his image, took to drastic measures. Eventually find... Eventually finding his style, he considered the possibility of a career in acting. <laughs> After a failed audition for his lifelong calling as the lead in BMX Bandits, and similar rejection for the remake of the A Team, <laughs> Mark couldn't believe his luck when he landed the role of Max Brannon in EastEnders. <laughs> In 2002, Trotter's Independent Traders launched, I'm sorry, I mean Ask Carpentry was born, renaming themselves, as the website says, or as I say, himself, as MJH Carpentry for what can only be described as tax reasons. <laughs> Thanks John for the detail, it makes for very interesting reading, and I quote, but if Mark wants to pay an accountant, he must first submit some receipts. <laughs> MDF Jointing and Hammering, or MJH for short, had the pre gemma values that if you supply the floor, we'll lay it. Flat back bed, no problems, we'll screw that too. Loose back doors, we'll hammer them in. <laughs> Promptly changed, and again, I quote the website, to polite, tidy, punctual, and honest. Well, one out of four isn't bad. <laughs> Mark met Gemma, or should I say was set up with Gemma, on a blind date. Charlotte, you have a lot to answer for. Unfortunately for Mark, he misinterpreted the blind date concept and thought that Gemma was actually blind. The right result for any ginger man. They were carrying out some Facebook stalk. Literally. Gemma carried out some Facebook stalking herself and came to the conclusion that Mark was pictured with a guitar, so he must be musical. Only to be slightly disappointed when he found out 
In reality, he wasn't. <laughs> Equally, Mark had his share of disappointment too. <laughs> when he found out that Gemma did not look like Tone Cotton. Mark did some research only for his eyes to light up. I mean, I mean light up. I mean light up, no, not the angry eyes. <laughs> These eyes. <laughs> After their first date at Three Horseshoes, where Mark respectfully but very cheesily brought her an apple, not an iPod, but an apple for the teacher, I'm pleased to report there was no funny business on the first date. The next day, and again I quote, Gemma reported into Charlotte saying the timeless words, he's either gay or really nice. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, she went really nice. And things kicked off from there. Mark, on the other hand, couldn't believe his luck. She had paid for dinner, owned her own horse, had a convertible, as did he, but rarely able to take it on the open road due to his heavy work schedule. In reality, the car was a pig, and it covered more miles on the way home from buying it than it ever did driving. <laughs> In close succession, three more dates followed. After a night at Jamie Oliver's, Masterchef Mark got on a culinary delight on date three, where Gemma's questioned his close relationship with a very respectable businessman, Sir Richard Brent. <laughs> there was a picture of Richard on the fridge with Mark, um, and he played along with it until eventually coming clean that the picture was, in actual fact, a waxwork of the poor man. <laughs> <laughs> Day four took them to Brighton. I can see where you think this is going after the first comment, but no, for the marathon. Um, <laughs> Literary. <laughs> Listen, it's the laughs, not the criticism. <laughs> when finally, by the fifth day, Mark's charms had worn off and he had made Gemma ill. They subsequently spent the fifth day together in hospital, nerfing a very sore toothache. Mark met the family soon after and kicked off a great relationship there too. In New York, a very nervous Mark popped the big question, to which the answer was a resounding yes. <laughs> Upon hearing the news, the families were over the moon, but Grandfather Peter had his own concerns for the future, and for the final time tonight, I quote the timeless words, I hope I don't have ginger <laughs> Mark's life is coming to an end. I'm sorry, I mean, Mark's, I mean, Mark's life story is coming to an end so far as we approach the here and now. However, there is one part I have admitted from the timeline, the stag do. And fortunately, from Spanish police CCTV footage, we have a compilation of just how committed we were to getting the beach bodies for the wedding that everyone has been commenting on today. <laughs> On this day in 2012, the London Olympics opened. A momentous event, a very memorable occasion. I feel this parallels the journey that Mark and Gemma themselves embark on today. On behalf of Mark and Gemma, I would like to thank you all for coming today and also ask you to think particularly about those who unfortunately are unable to be here too. I have to confess that had Mark's close friend Mike not sadly left us on the early bus home, I would not have had the pleasure of this speech. But for now, I'm happy to settle for the title of second best man. To Mike. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to invite you all to stand and raise your glasses in a toast to Mark and Gemma. 
and wish them that the love they possess is modern enough to last the times and old fashioned enough to last forever. The new Mr. and Mrs. Harris. Mr.